take you back to Kumasi, uh, where the Commission of Inquiry is looking into the Adura killings. And uh, currently, my colleague Arastas Asaridonko is testifying before it. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Erastus Asari. Don't call. Do swear. Do swear. By the Almighty God. By the Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. To this committee. To this committee. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. Nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Please, if you could take off the mask since at least there's nobody really around you so that we can hear you well. Okay, please give your full name again to the committee. Erastus Asari Donko. Please, where do you work? I work as a broadcast journalist with the multimedia group limited in Kumasi. In Kumasi. Okay. And can you tell the committee what exactly you do there? What's your position? What job you do exactly? I started with multimedia in 2012. No, what is your position? What role do you play? So I'm a broadcast journalist and my duty include uh, field reporting and also producing documentaries and features. Okay. So, in recent times, as part of your work, have you had any coverage of any news item in the town of Ejira in Ashanti? Yes, my lord. If so, can you tell the committee when this was and what? led you there for the coverage? My Lord, on the morning of 29th May. May? 29th May. Okay. 2021. I was assigned together with my team, a camera technician and my driver, to... For, for me to be extra sure, we are in July now. Are you saying 29th May? Yeah, 29th May. May, all right, continue. My Lord, um, I think it's July, rather. 29th July. June. June, June rather. Thank you. June. <laughs> so we were assigned to go to Edra to cover protests in the wake of the death of a social media activist, popularly called Kaka. So we left here around 8 a.m. in the morning and we reached the scene, that's the street of Edra. At about 10 minutes past 10 in the morning. Please, can you, for clarity's sake, can you tell us how many persons you went with, in, if you know their names, if you give it. So we were three. The driver included, that will be four. 
the driver included, that would be four. So myself, Erastus as a redonko, my camera technician, Kofi Asare. Kofi Asare. And Nuruddin Mohammed, who is a colleague reporter. And the driver's name is Peter Zika. Peter Zika. You can go on, please. My Lord, we reached Adra at about 10 minutes past 10. When we got to the main street, we were met by angry protesters numbering over 600 when they saw us they told us not to raise our cameras They indicated they were unhappy because Sorry, sir. Before you proceed, you said when they saw you, they told you not to They told us not to raise our cameras. Raise the yes, cameras. Like, uh, begin not to, to record. Yes, not to record. And the reason, my Lord, was that when their brother was killed, we were not there to broadcast events leading to his death. So some of them started using their hands to bang on our vehicle. But after my colleague, Nuruddin Mohammed, And one of the protesters at the time, who is now deceased, my Lord, Nasir Yusuf, spoke to them in Hausa. They calmed down. So Nasser Yusuf formed a ring around us so we could perform our duties. May I ask you, was Nasser the only person who kind of uh, try to protect you because I'm wondering how him alone could form a ring. So was he the only person or? In fact, there were two. Two persons. My Lord. Okay. Right. I, I, I has, the other person's name do not readily come to mind. 
but he was very active following us wherever uh, we went. So they now allowed us to film the demonstration. My Lord, some of them were holding sticks. If you say some of them, the them, who are you referring to? I'm referring to the demonstrators, my Lord. Some of them were holding sticks, knives, machetes. Choice of words, uh, very important. Were they holding sticks or wielding sticks? Some were holding the sticks and some were waving them like that. So they were wielding sticks? They were welding, yes, my lord. And some of them were also angrily chanting their grievances and their anger at the death of Kaka. May I ask you, please? Did you perchance get to know what? your colleague um, told them in house that that made them calm down. Nuruddin told them that made them calm down. That allowed them to now, yes, made them allow you to film now. When earlier when they had said they wouldn't. He told me that they told them we are here to do our job and that we are here for them to listen to them and broadcast their feelings to authorities. Thank you. You can continue. Initially, when we started filming again, uh, there were more angry youth coming towards us. And so, Nasir Yusuf, who is now deceased, directed us on which way to go. At a point, we, he directed us towards some tall buildings where we could film from. And then at a point when he saw we could film from the ground, he brought us back to the street. So we walked and filmed with the demonstrators. At a point in time, we will run ahead of them and film. And then wait till they catch up with us.
at a point there was a makeshift structure painted in NPP colors and paraphernalia. They started attacking the structure with the sticks and machetes. And finally brought it down. After that, we moved some few meters from that spot. And myself, my camera team, and Nasir moved forward to film the demonstrators. Then we saw the police water cannon vehicle approaching. Closely behind it was a military pickup with the inscription Operation COVID. Operation COVID. Please, can I ask, before you saw this police water cannon vehicle, since there was a protest going on, had you seen any policeman earlier before you saw the water cannon? No, my lord, there was no policeman or woman on the streets throughout the demonstration. What about any army personnel? No, my lord. Okay. You can continue, please. My Lord, we saw four armed military men in uniform step out of the military pickup. Come again, my lord. You first saw one following uh, with the inscription Operation COVID. That's the same pickup, my lord. So, four armed military men stepped out of the pickup and then formed a line and started firing into the air. Say anything prior to firing these shots? My Lord, if they said anything, I wouldn't have heard them because of the distance. The firing was into the air? Yes, my lord. The firing, my lord, went on for about a minute into the air. And then the firing seemed to be coming down, being lowered.
Please, can you, can you explain that or can you demonstrate that? Into the air, then which angle again? So initially, we saw them when they stepped out of the vehicle, they started shooting at this range. Then it came something like this. About the angle of the fire. Yeah, the I angle thought of... you were talking about the intensity. You see, uh, the shots were into the air, then you said uh, it started coming down. So I thought uh, you were referring to the intensity of the fire. My, my Lord, I'm referring to the angle at which they were. Shooting. Very well, thank you. At this point, I told my camera technician and Nasir Yusuf, who was behind us, to move to higher ground. So we started running. My Lord, whilst we were running, my camera technician was still filming. So we climbed an uncompleted one-story structure. So please, be, be, apart from you and your crew, was anybody else running, other members of the public? Yes, my lord. As soon as the military men started firing, the crowd started retreating. My Lord, whilst up there, my camera technician was filming and I was running commentary behind the filming. My Lord, now the firing became more intense. We saw three additional men in military uniforms joined them and started firing as well. Do you know how they got there? Was it another pickup? Was it a truck? How did they arrive at the scene? My, my Lord, I could not see it clearly, but it looks like another vehicle pulled up behind the military pickup and I did not see that clearly, whether they got out of that vehicle or another vehicle. There was quite a distance. Come again, my Lord. But you were sure there were three? My Lord, I'm sure. I saw them. You can go on. So the firing got more intense. then you could hear the bullet sound all around you from where we were. By this time, the demonstrators were running in all directions.
just some uh, beneath the building on the street. There is a street in front of the building. That's where all the action was happening. We saw one person in uh, white t-shirts and black trousers get hit by the bullet. My Lord, he fell to the ground and his colleagues who were running came back to pick him up. My Lord, you could, we could see the hesitation because bullets were still flying, they were still firing. So at the point they tried to pick him up and they stopped. They wanted to run, they came back to pick him up again. Then they dragged him on the ground for a while and then one of them picked him up and put him on his shoulders and started running. My Lord, all this time the firing was going on. Then from where we where we we saw the people and heard the people shouting that another person has been hit. That was my Lord just beneath the building, closer to where we were. We, we could only see the pool of blood on the streets, plenty of it. At this point, my Lord, the crowd had dispersed to and separated on both sides of the street. There was one to my left very far away and the other to my uh, right very far away and the military were in the middle. My Lord, just to go back a bit, when the firing was going on, at a point you could see the armed military men, some of them get down on their knees in shooting position and fire at the crowd. My Lord, most of this was captured by our cameras. My Lord, at this point, the crowd were concentrated on the victims on the ground. We saw the military retreat, the vehicles turned around, they boarded it and left the scene.
My Lord, we came down from the building and went directly onto the street. And at this point, we were able to capture the blood on the streets of the second person who got shot. So can you can you estimate in in your view how long this shooting went on for? My Lord, I can hazard a guess. It will be about between twenty and thirty minutes. Did you also get to know the two persons, the names of the two persons that you saw being shot? My Lord, later I learned it was Muntala Muhammad. A 26-year-old farmer. And Nasir Yusuf, 25-year-old farmer. And we learned, my Lord, he was the young man who was trying to protect us. So, can you tell the committee at what point this Nasser, who was with you all along, left you and your crew? My Lord, it was when I signaled to the team, I told them that we should move to higher ground. At a point, I thought he was following us. He followed us up to the base of the building. It was later when we got up there that I found out he went straight beneath the building. Instead of following us. Please, you can continue. So, when we came back to the streets, we were shown where Nasir Yusuf was struck by the bullet. My Lord, it was on the street, just beneath the building on which we were filming from. So, when the two army vehicles, or one that you saw, the second one, you're not too sure, when the two sets of army personnel, first four, second three, came along. Can you tell the committee at that point where the police water cannon vehicle was, whether it was still around or whether it has gone? My Lord, the water, police water cannon vehicle was still with them. It was moving ahead of them on the side. So the street was divided into two. The water cannon was on the left side, moving ahead of them, and they were on the right side, firing. Yeah. 
Please continue if you can. My Lord, when we saw the pool of blood, you, we were shown when he was struck and fell, where he fell, you could see the blood flow over to uh, 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 towards the end of the building and we were told he was rolling, trying to get up, but he couldn't. My Lord, we also saw a few meters from the building from where we were filming there was a, an elect, electricity transformer hanging mid-air. which has been struck by the bullets and it was leaking fuel. My Lord, from this time we saw the Some chiefs from the Adra Palace in black cloth coming to the scene where the bodies were. My Lord, they told us they've been sent by the Adra chief. to inspect what was happening on the streets. My Lord, they told us they did not invite the military to shoot at the citizens. but they invited them to maintain peace. At this time, the crowd was moving towards the Ejra Government Hospital. We followed up to the hospital. My Lord, at the accident and emergency unit. There were two bodies. One was on a stretcher covered with cloth. And one was on the floor also covered with cloth. We later, they were later identified as Nasir Yusuf and Muntala Muhammad.
And Lord, there, we also saw two people who were groaning in pain. One was being treated on the floor. And the other one was on a stretcher. There were other women who we were told by the medical superintendent had fainted upon seeing their relatives who died and had also been admitted. My Lord, later the youth and the families demanded the bodies for burial. There was a bit of pandemonium around the accident and emergency unit with some of them forcing their way in. And so the doctors could not even find space to work on the injured. So after banging on the doors and demanding the bodies, the medical superintendent finally agreed to their request. My Lord, it was when the bodies were released that a large chunk of the crowd followed them home. So gradually the place eased up and calm was restored. My Lord, the events that followed were that of preparation of the bodies and subsequent Muslim rituals and burial. From, from your narration, I suppose that the bodies were take, uh, when the bodies were taken away, you were still at the hospital, or do you yes, follow them? Yes, my Lord. Okay, so, but do you, did you get to know where this preparation of the bodies was done? Were you there physically or you, you, were, you, were, you were informed? My Lord, we were shuttling between uh, the homes of the bereaved families and the hospital. So at a point, we will go over to the bereaved families and then capture what is going on there. Then we'll come back to the hospital and still monitor how things were going with the injured. Can you tell the committee around what time this was? You have told us when you went, when you got to the town. Can you tell us around what time, uh, when the bodies were taken away, around what time it was? 
My Lord, if I can recall correctly, it was around midday, getting to 1 p.m. when the bodies, the first body was released to the families. And then it took about 40 minutes before the second body was also released to the families. Did you get to know whether post-mortem was conducted on any of the bodies? In fact, I spoke, I interviewed the medical superintendent. One, Dr. Mensa Mayer. And he told me, I, was, I asked a question uh, relative to why the boys were agitating at the uh, frontage of the accident and emergency center. And he told me that he couldn't just release the bodies to the families. They must go through a certain protocol. But there was no security at that point to also give him cover. And the way the youth were forcing themselves into the facility, there was nothing he could do than to call the police. But when he called the police, they told him in his own words that they couldn't come to the hospital at that time. So he said he had no option than to release the bodies. So the question still remains, was there post-mortem conducted? No, my lord. Thank you. So you can go. My Lord, the following day, we, around 10 a.m., we saw the police water cannon leading the park and I think about two military pickups full of armed men, a police van, and a police pickup truck, all full of armed policemen patrolling the streets of Ajra. Please, can I, can I confirm? Did you say the following day? Yes, my Lord. Okay, so did you come to Kumasi and went back, or you stayed? My Lord, we stayed. Okay. And how safe was it staying overnight in the town? Was it safe? How would you describe it? My Lord, it wasn't safe, and so we had to improvise and also look at our safety. As to if you could explain better, did you get some persons in the town guarding you, or how? How were you protected? Since you were strangers, let me put that way, strangers in the town at that time. My Lord, we moved from the town to a different location to sleep. And then we came at dawn. We came back at dawn. If you can continue the next day, yes. The following day, yes. What happened? Uh, come again, my lord. You, you, you said the following day. Earlier on, we did not hear you saying the following day. So you said the following day. Yes, the following day. Yes, okay. Please continue. My lord, so the following day was very calm and uh, peaceful. We had various dignitaries visiting the families. We also heard of meetings between the chief and 
traditional and religious leaders, urging the uh, youth to calm down. A lot that will be all. Thank you very much. But um, since you said you went there with your cameraman, obviously you may have taken some videos or pictures. Do you have any such evidence to produce to the committee? Yes, my lord. Uh, we were filming with live equipment. And so all that was happening was live on Joy News and all our multimedia platforms. We have uh, submitted, my lord, a copy of uh, the footage to the clerk to be submitted to you. Is it a video recording? Is it a video coverage? Is it yeah. a video footage? Yeah, the video, video coverage. Footage. Okay. So Please can you... mark, mark it as exhibit B. That is the second exhibit. Mark it as exhibit B. We will play it for, yes, before we ask any questions. So, so can you confirm what day this video footage uh, was taken? My Lord, we started filming from when we got there, during the demonstration, when the youth were coming from the cemetery, we lent. So that would be the 29th? On the 29th, 29th. my Lord. We Can started you? filming from there, right until when the military came in, right through when we were running up there and the shooting. My Lord, the third footage, because we didn't want to incur any problems, we, it's already been handed over. So if... B. Yes, my Lord. We are going to play it. Then uh, if we need any clarification, we will ask you to clarify. Yes, my Lord. The committee members will like to ask you some questions for clarification and other answers. Yes, my lord. Rastus, just a few questions and a few clarifications. You did the filming yourself, not yourself. I mean, your team did the filming. It's not a film from somebody else, right? My lord, it's not very clear. I was asking whether this film is an authentic film from you and your team, and that no other ones have been added or subtracted. No, my lord, no other ones have been added. This is from so our... So, it is not doctored? No, my lord. It's not edited? No, my lord. When we finish the film, we may ask further questions. Yes, my lord. Rastus, thank you, and um, I, I suppose my question is just to ask if this is the first time that you've covered a riot in your career? No, my lord. This is not the first time. Did you find anything different about this particular one when you first got to the scene? Yes, my lord. My lord, the the difference covering the riots at Tafu, and there was a clash between Muslim youth and the indigenous of Tafu. What is different is that the military at that, at that time were more tolerant. In fact, they used um, other uh, tear gas and other things to disperse them. They fired warning shots, but nobody was shot. Okay. But with this one, you could see 
the military men aiming directly at the crowd and shooting. At a point in time, you could see them kneeling and taking aim directly at the crowd and firing. Mm. That is the difference, my Lord. I see. Now, the water cannons that you mentioned, were they used at any time at all? My Lord, the only time I saw it um, spewing water was after the warning shots. It was very momentary. It was just a few seconds. It, it poured water onto the streets. It did not even uh, reach the demonstrators. And the demonstrators moved back or they were still where they were? My Lord, there was quite a distance between where the water cannon was and where the demonstrators were. And so the water had been fell short of even touching any of the demonstrators. I see. Okay, thank you. Yes, Erastus, you said uh, some chief later came to the scene and uh, they told I'm using you, not to you personally, but that you said they told us that they did not invite the police to shoot at the demonstrators, but they were there to protect the yes, people. Yes, my Lord. Yes. Did you understand them to mean that they invited the military to come to the scene during the demonstration. That was the uh, inclination I got. That was how you that, understood it? That was it. how I understood it, my Lord. That they invited them to come? Yes, my Lord. But my Lord, later when the same chief came to the hospital, I wanted to be sure. So I asked him the direct question, that did they invite the military personnel. No, my Lord, the question was who invited the military personnel? And then he replied that definitely is MUSEC, which is the Municipal Security Council. Okay. The first time that you went there and uh, you said the demonstrators approached your team but for Nasiru, who spoke to them, and uh, Nuruddin, did you feel threatened? Yes, my Lord, I felt threatened, but um, I could also sense that they were angry, and that was not the first time. Normally, protesters are angry, but if you remain calm and try to talk to them, they understand you and they calm down. Thank you. We will proceed to watch the video clip. Then any other questions that may arise, we will ask you. Yes, my lord. 